A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for attending to our stem cell webinar. Today we will show you biology in movement, and I believe in ways you've never seen before. We will see great um, dynamics of organelles, and the topic of this whole uh, webinar is about how to make great movies of very sensitive material, and in particular, how to make uh, live imaging with stem cells. Just a quick remark about asking questions. At any moment, you can ask questions within the chat panel. These questions will be sent to us and we will answer to you uh, by email. At the very end of the presentation, I will also answer uh, three of your questions. Let me outline now quickly the structure of this webinar. We will first speak about the state of the art of live cell imaging of sensitive material and in particular of stem cells, using stem cells as examples, because stem cells are very sensitive to all types of stress, manipulations, phototoxicity, etc. After quickly covering uh, fluorescence techniques and labor-free approaches, we will more focus on the technology we develop here at Nanolive, which is all tomography and how this technique allows to acquire uh, dynamic processes that were not observed before. So, let's start. Live imaging of stem cells is key to comprehend stem cell biology. In fact, impactful stem cell researchers nowadays always use live imaging. Biology is a dynamic process to catch all its details. Whatever is the process you're interested in, it's always better to see it evolving, moving, changing over time. You can see here, for example, a time-lapse imaging of neuroprogenitors over 18 hours monitored just with three time points. You also see here uh, stem cells stained with GFP developing over four hours with one image every five minutes. This shows uh, that uh, live fluorescence imaging is a great tool that led to major discoveries. Uh, obviously, it is really useful to be able to follow specific proteins or populations of cells over time. But it comes with a major limitation that is its uh, phototoxicity that limits both the magnification that can be used and the frequency of acquisition of movies, and as a consequence, also the length of the movies that can be made. Stem cells are sensitive cells, and using fluorescence microscopy is probably not the best option to follow them over a long amount of time, especially if you need to have a good temporal resolution. Compared to fluorescence imaging, Phase contrast requires much less uh, injection of energy within the sample uh, to obtain, in return, proper images of uh, populations of cells. That is the definition of a less phototoxic approach. In this case, you can observe uh, cardiomyocytes developing into a beating population of cells, which is quite amazing. It's taken from a paper well, from the famous paper from Yamanaka. You can also observe here, at higher magnification, moving glioma stem cells. What's clear here is that the physics of phase, phase contrast doesn't allow to access to subcellular details. At this stage, the conclusion is that uh, fluorescence imaging and what I would call first generation of label-free imaging brought great discoveries in the field of live cell imaging of stem cells. This is obvious. However, now it falls short in helping understanding finer dynamics of sensitive material, especially of stem cells. Therefore, it is a field that is full of new challenges. Let's see that. The challenges for a good live imaging of sensitive material like stem cells are the following. First of all, you need to overcome the difficulty of fluorescent tagging. Transfecting stem cells or modifying their genome such that your protein of interest is expressed with a fluorescent tag is a very tedious process. Stem cells are very sensitive to any type of manipulations and stresses. 
you need then to avoid biological perturbation of the process you want to observe. Adding a chemical compound or a fluorescent tag uh, within your system might perturb the way this system works. For these two problems, one solution is to take a label-free microscopic approach. We've seen that phase contrast, because of uh, its uh, specificity, cannot provide images with high content, with a rich amount of information. Therefore, you need a label-free approach that provides high-resolution images and potentially in 3D. We will see that in a minute. Finally, uh, to perform great live imaging of sensitive material, you would like very much to do long-term live imaging with high temporal resolution to catch RAR and fine dynamics and sample them with a very good temporal resolution. For that, you need a non-phototoxic approach such that the observation and the injection of photons in your sample is not going to kill your fragile sample, in particular stem cells. The new generation of label-free imaging techniques are slowly applied to stem cells. Therefore, this is a very young field with a lot of challenges. These techniques are mostly Raman scattering that are and Raman scattering uh, under its uh, various forms is very good at looking at lipid species within single cells and two-photon autofluorescence that is very good at looking in situ at population of cells. So with this technique, specific chemical compounds already present within cells react to uh, stimulation and create an autofluorescent signal. While these two techniques certainly answer the need for new label-free approaches for visualization of uh, stem cell biology, there is still a need of a more versatile label-free approach able to image uh, many biological details within single cells, and this without phototoxicity. In this context, holotomography is a technique of choice. And especially the holotomographic device we develop uh, at NanoLive that is called the 3D Cell Explorer. This microscope allows to image label-free uh, single cells with great resolution. So now let's see how this device works before going into the actual biology it can reveal. You can see here a glass of water with an object within. And you can observe how the image of this object is modified by the transition between air and water. This difference is due to a difference in refractive index of air and water. This is exactly uh, the physical parameter that the microscope measures uh, within a cell. So the cell is composed of different subcompartments that have different refractive indexes. And by recording how the light is perturbed by these different uh, refractive indexes, and this in the three directions, x, z, and y, uh, we can reconstitute in 3D the refractive index map of a cell. Cellular structures have a specific refractive index signature. This allows uh, to perform digital stainings of specific cellular substructures, like here, uh, the nucleoli in red or the cellular membrane in, in uh, green. These uh, digital stainings are made with Steve, the Steve software, and this software is also the software that controls the microscope. To finish with this part on how works our 3D Cell Explorer, I must mention uh, how the holotomographic uh, approach is implemented within our microscope. Because we can propose such uh, high-resolution images, and we are the only one to be able to do that. We have this capacity because we use a rotating arm. Let me explain to you how this works. As indicated by its name, Holotomography is about uh, generating holograms of your sample, but this not only in one plan, but in multiple plans, in this case, all around your sample. The holograms are generated by the interference of an object beam that meets the sample and a reference beam. And these holograms, as I just said, are generated all over the sample such that 
we can reconstitute a full holographic volume that is then transformed into a 3D image of your uh, object. Thanks to this patented implementation of holotomography within our 3D cell explorer, we have currently no match in the world of commercialized uh, holotomographic devices. So now let's see what type of biology uh, can be observed with our microscope. And I will guide you through a couple of um, dynamic processes that we could image like never before. The first organelle I would like to speak about are lipid droplets. Lipid droplets are those white uh, dots within those uh, mouse embryonic stem cells that you can see here moving uh, all over the place. Lipid droplets are storages for lipids and therefore they are of high interest for people studying metabolism. Seeing them moving and growing is a major challenge. So far, lipid droplets were imaged using body pie, which are fluorescent markers that go specifically within lipid droplets and give them a fluorescent signal. Such approach allowed it to discover many things about lipid droplets. However, uh, the staining with body pie is perturbing lipid droplet biology and the observation with fluorescence microscopy because of phototoxic stress limits greatly uh, the duration of the movies one can do and the frequency of acquisition such that the dynamics that you observe here were never accessible before. With our device, one can follow without perturbing them the dynamics of lipid droplets, how they move, how they distribute in the cell, how they grow, fuse or fission. Typically, one could, however it hasn't been done yet, uh, observe the effect of uh, specific metabolic drugs on uh, new parameters of lipid droplet dynamics. This is one of the many advantages to be able to follow such lipid droplets uh, with such temporal resolution. Let's now speak about another organelle uh, that is really interesting to understand how metabolism works. These organelles are mitochondria. You can see mitochondria uh, within those mouse embryonic stem cells here. All over the cell, you see those small structures, slightly grayer than lipid droplets. These mitochondria are the powerhouse uh, of the cell. They are also the center of many complex chemical reactions and they are very interesting to understand metabolism but also apoptosis, mechanisms of uh, cancer development and many more. Mitochondria are also very sensitive to phototoxic stress. Therefore, following the, them over a very long period of time is a great challenge. Moreover, observing them over a long period of time with such resolution is something that wasn't possible before because mitochondria are very dynamic, move a lot, but also perform fission and fusion events, which are very subtle events that happen within a very small amount of time. It wasn't so far possible to grasp as many mitochondrial events as one can see in such movie. And we will go more into details of fission and fusion events right now. What you can see here is a zoom in on some details of uh, mouse embryonic stem cells, especially uh, on mitochondrial tubules within protrusions from those uh, stem cells. You can observe following uh, the blue arrow an event of mitochondrial fusion between two mitochondrial uh, tubules, while in yellow you can follow two events of mitochondrial fission. We have here a resolution of approximately 180 nanometers um, in X and Y, so 180 nanometer of resolution, lateral resolution. To conclude this part uh, about mitochondria, it is clear that the usage of the 3D cell explorer uh, will certainly open new doors to the analysis of uh, the dynamic processes ruling uh, the regulation of mitochondria. It is certain that new discoveries will be made thanks to uh, this capacity to grasp new dynamics of mitochondria. We will now speak about another structure of the cell, which is the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane is a double membrane that surrounds the nucleus 
and the nuclear membrane contains the nuclear pore, but also lipids. It is a very important structure to uh, control the flux of the genetic information from the DNA towards the cytosol. You can observe it here. It is this fine layer that surrounds the nucleus. Of course, here, I remind you, it is a two-dimensional projection of a 3D structure. So we can observe the nuclear membrane in 3D, very much like we will be able to observe lipid droplets and mitochondria in 3D too. What one can observe uh, once uh, this uh, great mitosis is over <laughs> is that the nuclear membrane is very, very dynamic and reacts uh, very well to changes into uh, cytosolic uh, size and shape. Uh, this dynamic dimension of the nuclear membrane is certainly a new and very interesting topic. To finish with this quick overview of the different organelles uh, and the cellular structures that one can observe, of course it's a non-exhaustive overview, I uh, encourage you to ask questions uh, if you would like to have uh, descriptions of other uh, details of those cells. Well, to finish with, I would like to mention another amazing type of dynamics one can observe only uh, with the 3D Cell Explorer, which is um, the philopodia dynamics. Philopodia are actin filaments that are protruding out of the cytosol and are surrounded by a double layer of uh, lipids. They are extensions of lamellopodias, those broader structures that are very dynamic, and the cell produces them to sense and probe its uh, surrounding environment. Eventually, philopodia uh, can generate new points of attachment. Philopodia from two neighboring cells can also sometime, when they meet, very much like what you can observe here, uh, create what is called a nanotube, and that's a very intense topic of research the resolution both in space and time that is obtained by imaging those cells with um, the 3D Cell Explorer will certainly allow people to study philopodia in unique ways. And you can observe here in this movie uh, the finesse of those very thin structures. Those nice biological processes I just spoke about are observable only if you possess the proper knowledge and the proper equipment to maintain the cells alive under the microscope. For that, we provide all the necessary tools and protocols to perform long-term live imaging of stem cells. In particular, we provide the hardware with the microscope, with a top-stage incubator that has been designed by ourselves and Ocolab. And we, of course, uh, provide the application notes that tells you exactly how to set up the device and how to um, perform long-term live cell imaging such that you manage to reach the same type of movies that I just showed you before. Uh, so the idea is really that you can perform such, such type of images uh, right away with our equipment. And of course, that's a great advantage uh, if you can do that uh, in your research, because again, that's something quite unique. We provide application notes to help you use our um, device and environment control to perform such type of long-term live cell imaging. However, um, while doing those uh, long-term movies, what you're really interested in is to be able to extract information from um, those biological structures you're interested in. Typically, you would like to be able to do image analysis. So, as I just mentioned, we provide support for doing long-term live cell imaging and protocols to perform that, but also we provide support under the form of application notes to do a specific image analysis. Of course, it's not possible to cover all the variations of image analysis that one uh, might like to do in a certain laboratory. However, we cover topics under the form of step-by-step -step protocols 
to explain how to extract biological information from uh, objects that are contained within such type of refractive index movies. For the moment, on our website, you can find application note that explains how to uh, perform nice um, display of 3D volumes, typically uh, cells or subcellular structures, but also we provide application notes such as, such as this one that explains how to uh, segment, isolate specific biological structures uh, within cells and extract metrics out of them. Um, in this case, uh, the nucleus, or in this case, um, the cellular uh, shape and volume. So I encourage you already to have a look uh, at the application notes that exist on our website, and we will uh, publish one application note uh, that speaks especially about how to perform long-term live cell imaging um, on stem cells and how to produce and export nice movies. To go further, we show you here uh, other solutions and tools for inspiring your image analysis uh, projects. Um, in fact, Steve, the software that controls our 3D Cell Explorer and allows to acquire a refractive index volumes of your cell or other type of samples, um, Steve uh, contains a very nice export tool that allows you to export images, volumes, and movies such that you can treat them in uh, other type of softwares that you like, such as Fiji, I just mentioned it, or Tomviz, which is a very nice tool uh, for displaying 3D volumes. But one can think also about Cell Profiler, typically. So all those softwares are compatible with Steve because Steve can export uh, images and movies under uh, all the needed formats, TIFF, PNG, or uh, AVI movies, such that you can extract typical, uh, uh, um, typical metrics out of your uh, biological, biological objects following uh, image analysis treatment that you like to do, such as area, shape, volume, counting cells, tracking cells, or simply analyzing the refractive index. The 3D Cell Explorer is already a central device in many laboratories, and rather than going in a long explanation, I prefer to highlight the testimonial of one of our uh, early clients from Actelian. In a very short period of time, the 3D Cell Explorer has become very intensively used and we have found application in several different disease areas. We would not want to be without this instrument. This shows that this new technology, really fast, uh, is integrated within uh, research pipelines. On top of those great users' feedbacks, um, there has been already a couple of publications made with the 3D Cell Explorer, uh, despite the fact that the, this microscope is quite young, um, it has been used for very interesting research uh, and published research already. Uh, I can mention nanoparticles, for example, or the analysis of the e effect of certain um, drugs that act on the cytoskeleton on mammalian cells to validate the effect of drugs. <clears throat> we are now uh, quite sure that great research um, made on stem cells could be published soon with our 3D Cell Explorer. To conclude this presentation and before moving on answering a few questions, I would like to uh, say a few words to wrap together this presentation and uh, re-explain why the 3D Cell Explorer and our holotomographic technology uh, can be so useful for your stem cell research. First of all, you can uh, image your cell with great resolution without staining them. You can observe mitochondria, you can observe nucleoli, you can observe lipid droplets and much more without having to stain them. Because stem cells are so fragile, this is a great advantage. So no need to put chemicals or 
but a fluorescent tag on specific proteins, which come with tedious um, cellular manipulations. You can do a lot of imaging and fine imaging uh, with uh, our holotomographic approach. Also, and that's becoming more and more important, you can do great live cell imaging and virtually uh, over an infinite amount of time. Because our technology is very uh, much not phototoxic, it allows to acquire movies of living cells at a great frequency without perturbing, perturbing them, which means great biological dynamics without any bias due to the observation uh, technique. One thing I haven't stressed out too much is that our images, our uh, refractive index maps are in 3D. So the image analysis you're going to do, the image uh, analysis of your biological um, uh, subject of interest uh, will be described in 3D. You can easily mount of course, uh, many different technologies all over our microscope. And I just mentioned that we have a great environment control uh, system. Our stage also welcome microfluidic devices, uh, micropipeters, etc. Of course, it's very much novel. It's technology that is uh, out there since a very, uh, a very short time, and therefore, um, having this tool is definitely going to provide you a new point of view, uh, a new type of information that very few people uh, has in the world of research. I will now answer questions that we often get when presenting this work. The first question that we get very often is how long can you keep your cells alive under your microscope? And how long can you do such movies? The answer is very simple. We can keep the cells alive uh, under the microscope as long as you can keep them alive in a normal incubator uh, within a tissue culture room. The reason is the microscope is not generating any phototoxicity, even for very sensitive cells like stem cells. And therefore, if your environment control is well set up, and we've seen uh, that we are providing application notes for that, so if it is very well set up, then there is no reason you cannot keep cells alive uh, as long as the well you're using for imaging is not totally corroded. At that time, you would need to split the cells uh, before they die uh, because it's too confluent. When speaking about long-term life cell imaging, a concern can be the amount of data that is produced. We've been working on the compression of our data and each image is approximately 15 megabyte. I let you calculate what this represents for, for long-term life cell imaging at high frequency, but very fast you will realize that it is very manageable amount of data compared to what a normal microscope would produce. Finally, the last question is about um, the size of the images we can take. So images we are taking are 3D images, distribution of refractive indexes in the three direction, X, Y, and Z. And the Z uh, maximal size is 30 micrometers. With that last question, I am finished. So again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this presentation as much as I enjoyed making it. And um, see you soon for the next webinar.